Okay, we are back. And so we're going to pose this. So, Dr. Palmer, do you want us to look at some? Is there a particular video that you have in mind you want to look at? Uh, should I just kind of randomly select? We, we have some videos that you shared uh, with us. Uh, I can randomly select some if there's anyone that you want to look at in particular. There's one that I know that I want to end with. Um, but that, give me the, do you have the, the title of that one? I can make sure I don't play that one up front. That was the compilation. A compilation. Okay. I don't see one title compilation, but uh, climate change. Um, uh, either way, I'll I'll find that one. Okay. Let me play this uh, one. Air, airline. Airline. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see here. And my guy. Did he rename them? He may not. I have a climate change, rent prices, bright side, U.S. violence, unruly acts, weather update, violent weekend. That may be well, can I say seven, something? You know. Sure, go ahead. Okay, good evening. I, I'm sorry I got here late, but um, oh, no I, I agree with uh, Patrice who said we must be intentional about replacing negative thoughts with positive thoughts. And uh, I think, you know, now we're being uh, bombarded with news all day. I mean, in the past, news used to come on 5 o'clock, 5.30, 6 o'clock for an hour or so, but now we can watch news all day and live. And so, uh, and I think it does, you know, it does have an impact. We need to be informed. So negative news can be informative if something uh, is happening in our world, in our community or um, across the ocean, we need to know about it. And um, so, uh, and what's going on today uh, in Ukraine and Russia and things like that is uh, we need to be informed and uh, some countries may be put in the dark, you know, um, that don't have control, but we do need to limit it. And I think uh, uh, Dr. Palmer made good points that we need to limit the time that we uh, spend watching news or, or negative information, uh, which is not always positive. And, but we need to intentionally incorporate positive things uh, and uh, positive uh, uh, influences and things what we can do to um, offset or balance out the negativity. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's about balance because a certain amount of the, as you point out, news is uh, important but like anything else, uh, we need balance. And so it's the imbalance that brings about um, the problem. And so uh, I guess the next issue is how do we create that balance? What strategies do you use? I'm going to throw up some of these. You can pick, you can pick any of them. In, in this yeah. a top story with breaking news, a deadly shooting at a resort in Cancun. The new images just in. Check this out. Frightened tourists packed into the lobby of a Hyatt hotel after police say suspected drug dealers opened fire on the beach. Guests rushing inside with video showing several people hiding in the hotel's basement as well. Other guests barricading themselves inside of their rooms. You can see that right there. Police say two people who are presumed to be those drug dealers are dead. We have NBC News national correspondent Miguel Almaguer, who's live on set with us here on to at Top Story. So, Miguel, walk us through this. What, what is Mexico law enforcement saying right now? Well, Tom, it's still a developing situation, but here are some details that we do know tonight. We know the attorney general in Mexico says there was an altercation between several drug dealers on a beach when shots were fired near the Hyatt Zia Riviera Cancun Resort. A local news outlet is reporting at least eight gunmen then entered the hotel carrying long guns. The commotion sent tourists scrambling, as you can imagine. Images coming into NBC News show some taking cover in the resort's corridors and later guests gathering in the hotel lobby, reuniting with family. Mexico's Secretary of Public Security says two people died, as you mentioned, both believed to be drug dealers. At this hour, it appears no tourists were injured, and the gunfire, we believe, Tom, 
is over. And Miguel, one of the reasons why we're leading the broadcast with this, because one, it's very terrifying. A lot of Americans vacation there. But this is not new. There was a recent shooting where tourists were caught in the crossfire as well. Yeah, just a few weeks ago, Tom. And this is something that happens from time to time. Of course, Mexican police try to keep the strip of Cancun incredibly safe. That area depends on American tourists and tourists from all over the country. So it is an important area. And they have more security there tonight and tomorrow, Tom. Yeah. And then I have to ask you, what is the hotel exactly saying about all this? Because these resorts thrive on tourism. It's essentially the only industry in Cancun. The ho hotel statement is fairly limited, but what they're saying right now is that their guests are their top priority. Safety is their top priority. That's something they'll be addressing in the days to come. They're making the point that this shooting did not happen at the hotel, but that guests ran there for safety, Tom. All right, Miguel Almaguer leading us off tonight here on Top Story. Miguel, we thank you for that. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the... So, <clears throat> interesting uh, video there. I'm going to follow it right behind with another one that I think we want to, we can contrast the two. So, let's listen to this one. Good evening on this Monday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It's great to have you with us. I'm Wade Johnson in for David tonight. And we begin with that massive winter storm, days of snow, rain, ice, even tornadoes battering half the country, turning deadly. Snow and wind alerts from North Carolina to Maine at this hour. And as temperatures plummet overnight, the growing danger on the roads all the way to the south. More than two feet of snow in Ashtabula, Ohio. Drivers stranded in whiteout conditions. Strong waves and icy wind in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. In Raleigh, North Carolina, drivers sliding on the ice, struggling to regain control. Other cars scrambling out of the way. A weekend of treacherous driving there in North Carolina. Two people losing their lives in a wreck. A tractor trailer dangling off an overpass after sliding off the road in Durham. The storm also spawning tornadoes in Florida, an EF2 in Fort Myers, a couple there driving right into those dangerous winds. Tonight, heavy snow still falling in parts of New York and New England, and now the bitter cold across the east. ABC's Trevor All leads us off in Buffalo tonight. Tonight, all kinds of dangerous winter weather wreaking havoc for millions of Americans. East of Cleveland, Ashtabula, Ohio, in the bullseye for whiteout conditions. Over a foot of snow has already fallen, and it's still coming down. And they got more than two feet. First responders there struggling just to reach stranded cars and trucks. And Buffalo shattering their daily record by 6 o'clock this morning. Neighbors are trying to free this bus right now. It got stuck trying to back up on this side street because if you look up just a block ahead, there's another bus that was already stuck. In Niagara Falls, Stephen Michael shoveled six hours to get to work. More than what we expected. Yeah. Definitely. Haven't seen this winter in a long time. Where there wasn't snow, there was ice. Watch as driver after driver loses control on this icy road near Raleigh's airport. In Durham, this tractor trailer sliding off a frozen overpass. The driver taken to the hospital. And at least two people were killed when their car skidded off I-95 in Nash County. The same system spawned tornadoes on Florida's west coast, including this EF2 in Fort Myers. Oh. Winds up to 118 miles an hour destroying this trailer park. And after snowfall rates of four inches per hour here today, now lake effect snow is a big possibility through the morning. But even without it, with temperatures falling below freezing, even into the south tonight, black ice is a big threat. Wit. Quite the picture behind you, and it's just getting started in some places. Trevor, thank you. Let's get right to ABC's chief meteorologist, Ginger Z. And Ginger, where's the most significant snowfall hitting right now? Oh my goodness, we've seen some flakes here, but it's all west of us. But you know what else is remarkable about this storm? We started in New York City the day in the single digits, then had a severe thunderstorm warning within 24 hours. Really, that is a rare event at any point for January in Manhattan. But look at this storm. Now it is moving through western New York, so Binghamton up through Syracuse. Two to four <coughs> inches still possible through New England tonight. <laughs> then it will be moving east. I think the next noticeable part will be the wind. And you've got wind advisories from Pennsylvania right down through Appalachia. 20 to even 50 mile per hour gusts. One more shot of Arctic air, of course, is coming at us as if that's the end of winter. But at least this but week, least this that week, starts with that 28 starts with below 20... the feels like in Des Moines. 11 below wit in Kansas City. All right, we know you'll be tracking it for GMA as well, Ginger. Thank you. So, you know, um, I, I kind of let it play long because there's a lot of interesting inter information there. What, what are your thoughts about the first one? 
uh, the shooting in Cancun versus the weather system. Um, uh, but let me just throw my thoughts out, and then I'll pass the mic. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the shooting in Cancun, I guess it's important to know that something like that happens, like, and, and I think the information, you know, I guess if you're going to travel to Cancun, know that these things can happen uh, and the details of it. Um, I don't know how much it affects our day-to-day lives, but but I would put that sort of low on the totem pole of importance to know whether or not there's a shooting in Cancun, because there's shootings all over the world in different places. And so uh, so that's one thought I have with that. The weather system report is interesting because generally speaking, or I should say generically speaking, we need to know what weather systems are doing and and you know whether there's a threat or forecast. Uh, so weather from the standpoint of forecasting the weather, I think is important. This focus on the doom and gloom of what has already happened. So if, if, if you would ask me, okay, is weather knowing information about bad weather important? I would say yes. Uh, but I want to know about it a day or two before it comes so I can prepare for it. Me knowing about a weather system that's already had an impact doesn't necessarily it, it may or may not have a, a benefit to me, but unless it's forecasting something else. But they seem to put an emphasis on, you know, destruction and death and the like, and there's less of an emphasis on, you know, prediction of what's coming. Now, toward the end, they had the meteorologist talking about some aspect of a forecast, but that was after the majority of it was talking about doom and gloom, death and, and destruction. And this, oh, by the way, systems moving through, and and she didn't really give a forecast. She kind of just told the active of what the 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 uh, satellite was showing at t- at the time, but didn't tell what's going to happen. Well, it's more black eyes tonight, et cetera. So they mentioned that to him, but a very small part of the forecast. Most of it's doom and gloom. I don't know what what it, who else have any thoughts on that. Well, well, I, ha- I had several thoughts on it, but you have already covered them all. I guess I should have gone first. <laughs> so, in that case, I want to get back to the point of the psychology of the of the of the negative news because, yeah, those are all good points. That was the same things I saw too. Like, you know, what happens in Cancun may not affect me in Houston today because there were you know th- shootings in Houston. Every city you can name, there was a shooting in that day. You know, <laughs> at some point, what, no matter if it was a at a beach or it was in a restaurant or wherever was the shooting goes on. But the impact of the negative news, you know, I, I did a, um, um, uh, I guess a, a presentation or a research on uh, articles talking about how uh, uh, stressors are the underlying causes of the health problems we see, how we're tying this to health, that a lot of the stressors uh, present themselves in many ways. Normally, you talk about stresses. You talk about things like um, uh, family stress when there's as family disruptions or people not getting along, social issues is going on, having problems with your neighborhood is stressors, having problems on the job, uh, uh, even uh, having problems. We we, we they, they did research to show that driving while black was a stressor for you know people of of, of color. But I didn't realize until now, thinking about this, that actually watching the news is another type of stressor. And so it, it actually carries a, a certain level because it creates stress after you finish watching the news. And when we talk about the, the negative impact or, or the positive impact, uh, there are two types of stresses. One is a, is a chronic stress, which is a one that's really, is really deadly and causes problems. They, they tie chronic stress to things like cardiovascular disease, a chronic hypertension, they they tie it to risk for diabetes, uh, uh, affecting your immune system, low immunity. And acute stress was just a short stress, like uh, the things that tend to stimulate us. So, or tend to make us more productive or more active. Like if, if, um, for instance, you talked about the weather, if we had a news report that told us that uh, on Thursday, as tornadoes come, you know, go get groceries, uh, go get gas, get water, be prepared. And that's an that's a, an acute stress. Yeah, I'm stressed. I don't want a tornado to come, but I'm gonna be prepared for it. But seeing about how this tornado ripped up the town and left everything devastated, and eight people were killed, and it's all over now, that's more of a chronic stressor because you can hear those stories day after day. And so, as we watch this negative news, it has an overall health impact on us over time. So you, people don't really associate it with it, but chronic stress is what this is. And the news is carry of, is a carry, I call it a carry of stress. 
is a problem for for our society. Is a problem for our health. I mean, it's a tremendous contributor to uh, immune suppression. It was one of the biggest factors when it came to chronic stress. So uh, I think you know, even when we look at pandemics and things like this, another not only diet and nutrition and lifestyle, but chronic stress is another immunosuppressor that that is, is so important. So, uh, I mean, I, I got palpitations from watching those news stories right there. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to turn it off about 10 seconds earlier. <laughs> I'll try to shorten the next clips. <laughs> and I wanted to, I mean, I wanted to say too, I'm trying to highlight things that are not as obvious. I mean, we know the obvious is obvious. I mean, we know that there's so much happening in the world today. I try to stay away from those topics that are obviously stressful, you know, the war, um, the pandemic, and those type of things, but there's so much other in the background that still is negative that we may not see is negative, but it's doing the same um, thing to stress our mental health and our physical health. Yeah, that's, uh, it, it's true that we are, um, and, and as as you know, Dr. Ford Atkins pointed out, that, that there's that layering effect, you know, there's certain things that they kind of throw out there that gives you some chronic low level of stress. And then there's some, then there's a flare up, you know, so it's in, you know, it's like, you know, war, 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 pandemic, pandemic, pandemic. And it's like, you know, uh, weather storm, you know, run for the hills, uh, go get your supplies. And it's like, ah, uh, you know, and so you have this low level stress and then there's a flare up of stress on top of that. I mean, even some of the even some of the news stories we watch, the, I, I, the intros to news stories are, you know, if I hear the CBS nightly news come on, I hear the timpanies coming on, or I hear, I hear, uh, we've listened to the news a couple of days ago, sometime, and uh, the voices they use, a what's the guy named Hansberry, uh, Dr. Pamela, that comes on with his uh, the voice, the deep voice, sounds like James Earl Jones. Uh, this is what's happening today. And all those things get your attention. You know, uh, breaking news, they always have an intro. So you can be in the other room and people start running toward the TV. It's like Pavlov's dog. You're trained to when that sounds come on or it, it happens. And, and one thing I want to say about the news 24-hour cycle that Dr. Pamela mentioned before is that when I was growing up, maybe, maybe telling my age now, a long time ago, as, as a child, the only thing we never wanted to watch on TV was news. And, and when Dr. Palmer mentioned that children, you know, almost half the children want feels important to watch the news. That's that's just mind blowing to me because that was the last thing we ever wanted to watch. When the CBS came, news came out, we wanted to run out of the house, you know, because our parents always would watch the news from five thirty to six o'clock or six thirty to seven o'clock, and that was it. And we 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 hated that that news hour. And now I I understand why the kids want to watch it because if they're living in fear every day, they figure they can get a head start on what's going on and try to understand it. But, you know, things have really changed 180 degrees. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, Dr. Uh, Palmer, there's a video titled Sinclair Script for Station. Do you think that might be the compilation? What's the name of it? Sinclair's Script for Stations. Is that the compilation? Yeah, that, I don't want you to play that one yet. We do. Can you find the one that says um, uh, he didn't put anything in there that says airline? Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, I thought there was one. Uh, climate change triggering extreme uh, to kill is airline, right? Yeah. Uh, is there anything else in airline? Can you give the whole title? That it. Well, it's the the link. Ends in uh, 74. Oh, hold on a second here. I'll find it. The link ends in 74. Yeah, the number 74. Uh, okay. The bright side, looking back, violence, violent weekend, press high rising. Oh, Americans, prices of squeezing Americans, dangerous. Uh, I'm missing that one. I'll tell you what, okay. let me play okay. one. Okay, I'll, one. I'll play one and I'll look for that one while I'm playing right. one. So, Let's look for um, um, violence. Uh, it's, it's too much. It's too much. It was so Surveillance <laughs> video captures the brazen attack in broad daylight. A cyclist stabbing a delivery man in the back. The NYPD now investigating. From New York to Chicago to Cincinnati. Violent crime surged this weekend. At least 11 people killed, 55 wounded in 10 mass shootings across seven states. Oh, oh, 
In Austin, Texas, one killed, 14 wounded. Savannah, Georgia, one killed, seven wounded. The senseless acts of gun violence in our community have to stop. Just this year in the U.S., there have been 273 mass shootings, defined as any incident where four or more people are shot. There have been 31 so far this June, and we're not even halfway through the month. What is going on here? We've seen a lot of the pandemic-related issues related to mental health, unemployment, uh, financial stress, combined with a lot of the retaliatory violence that happens in a lot of the inner cities. But it's even more than usual. Portland, Oregon has seen a staggering 740% spike in homicide since last year. In this neighborhood with children watching, bullet holes are now common. My wish for people out there is to have guns to stop killing people. Experts say gun violence usually peaks in August, so police departments across the country are concerned this trend could continue as more COVID restrictions are lifted, Lester. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow t so, um, again, more violence. Uh, here's one about rent prices. This is a different uh, um, kind of uh, story, so let's take a look. Now to the rise in rent prices. I was just talking about this with some yep. of my friends. Prices in New York City have skyrocketed. Americans across the country are struggling as the prices soar. Average monthly rents increased by 14 percent across the U.S. in 2021. And the cost has risen even higher, up to 40 percent in some popular cities like Austin, Texas. To make matters worse, economists say rents have more room to grow. Consumer experts expect them to rise by 10 percent in the year ahead. These higher prices could be a key driver of inflation this year, posing yet another challenge to the Biden administration. Joining us now is CBS News Money Watch reporter Megan Cirillo. Megan, great to see you again. So can you break down some of the price hikes in these individual cities and why some cities are seeing much higher rises than others? Sure. So on average, across the 50 biggest metro areas in the U.S., rent rents rose by about 14 percent. But like you said, in Austin, Texas, in these coveted markets, they were up by 40 percent. And we're going to cut there. We I mean, uh, they're getting some details, which I think is good. But uh, and, and I think that the detail part of play a little bit of that so we can see that. But it seems like the analysis can be helpful. But it starts off with. Rent's going up 14%. And I think to some of the points that you were making, you know, some of the voices and tones and like that, even though it could be an informative uh, piece of information, but, you know, there's a kind of a scare tactic to it. Any, anybody else thoughts on that one or the one before that with the shootings? Nope. Okay. I have a little problem with my connection, so I'm not. It's going in and out, so I'm not sure if I'm heard uh, okay. clearly. We, but go ahead. Yeah, we heard you just now. Uh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, let me do one more. Any more before we get to the final one uh, that you have an interest in? Dangerous winter weather. We kind of covered winter weather. Weather already. Um, there's one is press pause. Negative news. You want to take a look at that one before the final? No, one? no, you don't. You need to do that one. Okay. Um, you do well, gas, gas, huh? gas prices. Okay. Ga oh yeah, gas, gas prices. So okay. At gas stations across the country, prices are shooting up higher and faster than they have in more than a decade, breaking records in California. Five dollars, six dollars, premium as high as a jaw-dropping seven fifty-five. Sticker shop. <laughs> Wonder what's next. You know, it's, if it's going to be seven now. It's going to be nine pretty soon. The national average now hovering just under $4 a gallon. The spike part of a global ripple effect stemming from war with a price hike every single day since Russian forces invaded Ukraine, up a total of 38 cents here in the U.S., expected to go even higher as energy giants turn their backs on Russian oil. How much higher can prices go here? Well, I think it's certainly within the realm of possibility that here very quickly in the next 72 hours, we could see the national average breaking its all-time record high. So far, U.S. sanctions have carefully avoided directly targeting Russian crude oil exports, fearing a global energy crunch. But in Washington, there are calls for a full embargo, backed by a recent poll that found 80 percent of Americans support an all-out ban on Russian oil. Are you willing to pay more for gas if it meant more restrictions on Russia? 
Uh, personally, yeah, I probably would, honestly. It's, uh, I feel like it's just a little price that I might need to pay. I would rather support Ukraine in whatever we can. If that means gas prices hike up, like, I would, I would pay it. Experts say whatever the outcome, expect to see higher prices well beyond the pump. Anything that touches a truck, commerce, deliveries, groceries, lumber, going to the store, anything that is being shipped via semi-truck is eventually going to get hit. Gotti, just look at those prices behind you. How much could this end up costing families here in the U.S.? Yeah, Jose, just seeing these prices is mind-boggling, and hopefully people will be able to find cheaper prices. But experts say the way things are going, the average American family may be spending $1,000 more in gas than they did last year. So uh, that's an interesting one because, you know, I can only imagine they drove around town to find the sign with the highest prices. <laughs> and, and they probably interviewed several People, of course, with the, the ones who are being patriotic and supporting, well, supporting Ukraine, the one guy said, well, it can go up to $9 or even more. You know, they probably had <laughs> chose him among several people uh, who was probably more pessimistic. But, but um, yeah, it's two thoughts. It was informative. So I thought that was a helpful aspect of it. But, again, an emphasis on the negative component, uh, you know, cannot be ignored. And, you know, I can see a story like that being beneficial. So let's say you had a story like that that's informing you that, hey, gas prices are going up. That's informative. Let's make, you know, uh, decisions that's going to affect that. Maybe I should buy, you know, stock up on my beans and dry goods now because a month from now it's going to be more expensive because it's going to be more expensive. So that's informative. So maybe that's a positive negative story. The problem is that it's probably sandwiched by, other negative news that's unnecessary. And so, you know, you maybe have a Cancun killing before that and 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 some other killings before that. Then it's like, okay, killing, killing, gas prices up. And so but you're on your wits end. I feel like even the way they present that kind of is we we all can see the gas prices are going up. I mean, we, we know that. We're aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's in the presentation of it's going up and where, how high is it going? Is it going to $10? Is it, you know, so why are we adding that level of where it's going versus dealing with where we are right now? Um, because we know what's happening in the society is pushing it, but why, well, let's deal with where we are instead of saying, oh, it's going to be $20 um, soon. Yeah, we don't, we don't know that. Dolores McLean said in the school in the 70s, they learned that 50% of the news was fake. I don't know, you know, the source of that. Now it says more like 80% fake now. Did you find any information? You said 65% of the news outlets don't correct mistakes. They don't use the word fake necessarily, but in the literature that I saw, they said that 87% of um, stories are exaggerated in relationship to the pandemic in particular. Really? Can you send me that link? Yeah. <laughs> we won't talk about it more here. <laughs> That's going to be another. Hour. Speaking so they of don't, which, they don't really call, you know, they don't really say fake, but, you know, exaggerated. Okay. Sensationalized. And we'll look at that. But by the way, I'm going to take a quick little break. I know we're running up toward the end, but um, as many of you know, we've been in uh, uh, Facebook jail, uh, excuse me, YouTube jail. Uh, I'm not going to give Facebook any ideas. And um, so we have a private outlook and and the fresh natural live was on last week we have a community uh montgomery heart wellness uh health uh journey community uh mm -hmm. go to montgomeryheart.com uh it is uh there is a small investment you make as part of a member to that but we will actually be bringing content much more in-depth rich content not only from this channel but other sources there'll be other experts coming on talking about topics uh, that uh, I think is in, in, in very important. You'll have access to that and also past content. We actually had a debate, a, li a live debate on the issue of the recent um, jab, as people talk about, and uh, there was you know, no censoring, and therefore you know, we were able to talk about whatever we need to talk about. Uh, but more content, more information, very similar to this, will be presented uh, in a much more open manner. So Go to montgomeryheart.com forward slash journey. 
uh, and you'll get more, learn more about that programs, much more in terms of infor information, um, uh, support groups and the like. Uh, so it's a rich community to be involved in. So, so I invite you to that. So back to our, our comments. So, so that, that's an interesting insight um, uh, about the whole issue of quote unquote fake news. So like you say, they don't call it fake, but you know, uh, politically correct words, phrase like, you know, exaggerated, et cetera, uh, is interesting. Um, here's a question here. Have you ever listened to Dan Muir's tone in his voice on ABC World News tonight when he first comes on and gives highlights of the news? It invokes fear. Yeah, I mean, I think you alluded to that. I mean, that, that they're actors. And so, uh, and the, the talent is supposed to act out the news and not necessarily report the news. We, we, we tend to think that they're reporters, but I don't know. What, what, did you find anything in your study about news media people, their backgrounds, or are they all from a journalist background or many of them from other backgrounds where they're not really I journalists? Didn't, I didn't look that part up to see who, you know, who exactly they are. But I mean, we know that they hire people that have a certain look on the news. I mean, because they all have that certain look. So. Yeah. Yeah. And just because you have sure. a journalist degree, your training may be in acting. I mean, it's, I'm not sure what they're teaching people in journalism uh, school. Well, well, I'm sure they have speech coaches or, or, or coaches that coach them on how to present that too. Like, you know, like uh, all other news commentators, you know, so if they don't, they'll teach them we got to do it this way or you're off. That's a good point. That's a good point. And they all have that same um, rhythm to their voice, you know, that, that news voice. Yeah, that, that's uh, so. There's some common things they bring on the scary. Why don't we look at this uh, final video you have here? This must be a Zinger Sinclair script for stations. Why don't we look at this and uh, we'll comment on this before okay. we go out? Hi, I'm Fox San Antonio's Jessica Headley. And I'm Ryan Wolf. Our, our greatest, greatest responsibility, responsibility is, is to, to serve, serve our, our Treasure Valley communities, the El Paso Las Cruces communities, Eastern Iowa communities, Mid Michigan communities. We are extremely proud of the quality, balanced journalism that CBS4 News produces. But we, we are concerned, concerned about trouble trying to be responsible, one sided news stories, stories plaguing our country. country. Plaguing our country. The sharing of biased and false news has become all too common on social media. More alarming, some media outlets publish these same fake stories without checking facts first. The sharing of biased and false, false news, news has, has become, become all, all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms to push their own personal bias and agenda to control exactly what people think. And this is extremely dangerous to our democracy. 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 <laughs> oh boy, I tell you, this is crazy. So like a guy selling you a pack of cigarettes telling you that uh, the uh, soft drink you're buying is extremely dangerous to your health. Um, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, any, any, anybody's thoughts, your thoughts, Dr. Palmer, you, you put this together. What, I mean, there's a lot of thoughts that somebody could have. That's, a, that's quite a bit of irony there. <laughs> well, that was, you know, an example of the, the stunting or, you know, they definitely are pre-scripted, um, and sharing the script across stations. It doesn't matter what station they have the same verbiage and lines to say. I mean, and I've, we've seen, well, I've seen compilations like that. Um, on other news items also. They just happen to be talking about um, fake news. He used the term fake news in that story. But they, this is, again, the scripting that is done. And also the emotion is the same across the board um, with, with most of them. And that's, you know, when you play it all together, it plays as one sound. 
Yeah, that's 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 a good point. So that there's universal scripting. Now I remember. Now this is uh, a little bit of uh, tangential, but it, but it, it but the fact that you you brought that compilation up reminds me. Now we had a news story done on us back in uh, 2008 by local Fox News here in Houston, and uh, now this. <clears throat> I wouldn't call it negative news because it was done on us, but that's another story. But anyway, some bias. But um, it was a news story done on how what we were doing about you know nutrition and people reversing diabetes and the like. And uh, it went viral locally. The the local station got ten thousand hits on the website, and we were overwhelmed with new patients and the like. And we had to do live chats, and they did a special a couple of months later. But one thing I realized that when they when that story did well, they took that story video clip, the script rather, uh, and videos and sold it to 12 different Fox affiliates around the nation. And so then they had their news people read the script. And, and of course, the video B-roll and video was the same uh, because all the P-Page were here. Uh, and, and, and I knew that, but I, I knew that because they told me, but then I found out uh, more directly because one of the videos, the video played uh, was in Atlanta. Uh, uh, so it aired in Atlanta. Someone in Atlanta video, recopied the video and put it on YouTube. So our first video of a story done here in Houston was aired in Atlanta, video and put on YouTube. This is, you know, in 2008, 2009. Uh, and uh, you know, I didn't know it until I heard about someone in California, Los Angeles, who called me about a YouTube story and wanted to ask us questions. So we had a, the, the story was sold in Atlanta, air put on YouTube, and somebody who saw it in L.A. called us, and that's how I found out about it. But I say that, say this, I would imagine if there's a local story that, you know, blows up and it has some national appeal, they may sell the same story to other affiliates in addition to, you know, writing the same script, the selling of stories as well that they do, uh, that I learned in that uh, example. Um, fascinating stuff. Any final words, uh, Dr. Palmer? I'll give you the final word. I mean, you put this excellent <laughs> discussion piece together. Uh, excellent yet depressing. <laughs> no, I mean, I just want people to be aware, not depressed, because we we all know this is this is not new information. We most of us have talked about this. We see it in our um, everyday. Just know that you know it can uh, or it is having a negative impact on our on our, on us individually, but also society. So maybe have a little bit more compassion when you're talking to somebody at work or um, you see somebody in a store who's upset because they may have their own issues and then be dealing with hearing additional bad news. So you know just. In knowing how to um, take this information, absorb it, and use it how we need it, but then not let it change who we are on the outside. And again, my focus is on the children, helping pay attention to what the children are seeing and taking it in. Um, we can't block it. So even taking away the phones is not going to do it because it's everywhere. It's being it's popular culture. I mean, now news is also popular culture, you know, so for the kids not to know what's going on is is not allowing them to um, interact in the surviving the environment. But how did they, they now take this information and not internalize it, but know how to put it in a space and continue to thrive in their life and not live in a fearful space? Um, so I think you know, in addition to adults doing the things that they need to do to kind of get themselves balanced, I, I want to emphasize the importance of keeping the children balanced in present day society. Yeah. And I like that word balance because I think, you know, we have to be informed, but we have to be aware of the process and mechanism by which that information is being delivered. And it's almost uh, analogous to, you know, uh, getting uh, a seed or a nut from a shell, you have to crack through that shell and piece through and get what's valuable and move aside or discard the rest. And so we have to realize that <clears throat> information is coming to us and there's an agenda through which people are delivering that information and we have to discern it. And one, one strategy I typically try to use is use try to get balance of it. So 
you know, if the, the news is giving you one piece of information, you may call and, you know, maybe it's some bad news in a certain area. Maybe you call and talk to someone um, and maybe read a book or look at some historical aspect of that news, depending on what it is. So if it's a war or whatever the case is going on, maybe try to read something about that area. I mean, we got the war in Ukraine. Understand a little bit of the history in terms of you get a historical perspective that will maybe give you a better understanding of what's happening. Uh, and and it may not seem as doom and gloom as opposed to I mean, in a situation where you have a bigger picture and understand what's happening. Uh, so that can apply to certain things. Um, I, I recall uh, being called here by some friends in the D.C. area and other parts of the country. They would call and say, well, how are you doing? Are you OK? And, and, and I would say, well, I'm fine. What's going on? They said, well, there's a big flood out there and want to make sure you're OK. And, you know, I'm going to work and don't know. About, but, you know, there's rain and there's some parts of the city that's flooding. But they're hearing the national news. And if you look at the national news story, you think the entire city is underwater. And so that was just an example of how dramatic things can be. But um, if you hear something on the news that seems to be informative, check other sources, whether it's calling someone directly in that place or doing whatever. Uh, you know, it's you know, we have different means of information, I think, and the news is one means of information. Uh, but there are other ways, even if you're calling someone or reading some, a book or whatever the case is, uh, I think that's a, a strategy. So uh, anyway, wonderful, wonderful presentation. I'll see you guys backstage while I close out. We've had a great story. And we gave an extra seven minutes, extra 12 minutes since we were off for two weeks. Uh, and uh, we're going to work very hard to stay uh, out of uh, YouTube jail. Uh, that means uh, many of our our current uh, you know shows are going to be a little bit uh, filtered, but but either way, it's going to be great quality here. So I invite you to stay with us here on the channel, but more so, I invite you to join us in our uh, local community, MontgomeryHeart.com forward slash journey, uh, because we think uh, that individuals should put themselves on a health journey. Um, you know whether or not you need to reduce medication, control your diabetes, or you want to run a marathon. You know, want to learn a third or fourth language. Uh, your health journey is your overall goals for yourself, physical, mental, uh, psychological, spiritual. You want to be on a path to enhance your overall well-being. So I invite you to take a look uh, at our channel uh, and come and join us. We're going to have lots of information, including uh, members on this show, as well as uh, other uh, guest speakers and uh, there'll be support groups and recipes and a whole host of content, a uh, whole host of uh, informative sources and lots of content and materials for you to benefit from. So until next time, oh, I always forgot. Please hit the thumbs up if you haven't done so. If you haven't done so, also uh, subscribe to the channel, like us, give us a, lots of likes, lots of love so this video can go out, share it because I think this is important information. And also, um, uh, stay tuned with us, stick, stick with us next week. Uh, we have great shows every Monday night, and we promise to stay out of YouTube jail going forward. Until next time, keep it fresh, natural, and live.